Whoa. 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 What happened? What happened to my Taken? Taken 1 was amazing. I love that movie. Taken 2 was mediocre. I would even say kind of bad. But it wasn't a franchise destroyer. It wasn't like, oh, I don't want to see another Taken. I want to see another Taken. I just wanted it to be done good or done well. That's English. What? What? Taken 3. Just do Taken 3. It's, it's great. Let's get, let's get the review. Let's, let's start. This year is going to be a great year for film. You got a new Star Wars, you got a new Jurassic Park, a new Avengers, Ant-Man, a bunch of other awesome looking films like Kingsman, which I heard is great. Uh, just some really awesome looking movies. The Revenant, that looks great. I can't wait for some of these films. What? What happened to my Taken? I already said, what happened? This movie is not only bad, but it is a crime that this movie exists because Taken 1 is a fantastic movie. I, I don't care. It's a fantastic film. I love it. It's one of my favorite action films. It is a legitimately good action film. Taken 2, like I said, mediocre. But this movie, it's not just bad. <laughs> no. It insults the intelligence of everybody watching it. It's like the director and everybody else was just like, you know what? Screw it. People watch Taken 2. That was a crap movie. We know. We didn't even try. We're just like, hey, Taken 1 makes so much money. Let's make Taken 2. Oh, put effort in it? Pfft, fuck that. Let's just fucking make a movie where it's just ridiculous. Doesn't matter. And let's just shove it out there. And, oh, it made 50-something million dollars in the first weekend? Oh, man, it made $140 million overall? Oh, man, it made $350 million worldwide? Let's make another one. And put no effort in it whatsoever. Not, not even a little bit. Taken 2, there wasn't that much effort. There wasn't that much effort. This one, none. None at all. Not even an ounce. Nothing. Not even Liam Neeson could make me kind of like some of this movie. The only parts in this film that I like are the emotions between Maggie Grace and Liam Neeson. When they are together, you feel like they are father and daughter. If you like Maggie Grace, that's up to you. Me, I found her tolerable. I thought she was fine in this one. I thought she was fine in the last one. I thought she was fine in all three of them. I don't, I don't care. I felt that father and daughter relationship. And I felt when the big thing happens, when the mom gets killed, not spoiler, it's in the trailer, it's in the premise, it's, a, it's everywhere. It's the whole premise of the movie. When the mother gets killed, you feel the emotion between Liam Neeson and Maggie Grace. You feel like they actually... They actually love this person, you know, and that's what acting is. You're supposed to feel that emotion on the screen. You're supposed to make us believe that, and they did a good job. They did their jobs. That's pretty much the only positive I have. They did what they were supposed to do. That's not really positive. That's just like, hey, you did what you did. Here you go. Here's a paycheck. Now get on my face until Taken 4, which most likely will come out in two months, seeing that they didn't put any time in this film. And, of course, it made money. It made a lot of money. Okay. I didn't explain what's so bad about this film. I'll just... I'll say one person's name. And if you have seen any of this other person's movies, you will know why this is bad. Olivier Megaton. Olivier Megaton, if you do not know, he's the director of Taken 2. He did so well with that. Columbiana, which I don't think anybody saw. I did. It was crap. And Transporter 3. Now, what did all these movies have in common? I'll tell you. It had piss-poor action cinematography. When it was filmed during the action, it is edited to shit. We know Jason Statham could do action. We know. We saw freaking Transporter 1 and 2. He can do action. Hell, even Zoe Saldana we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy can do action too. 
Liam Neeson in the first movie. I know it's I know he's older now, but with Liam Neeson when he did the first movie, he was 55. You can't or 56 or whatever. You can't tell me that only after a few years he can't do a single punch without having to edit around it to make it look like he actually punched someone. That's what they do in this film. Whenever he's about to punch someone, it'll cut and it'll go on to the other side so you can see the punch this way and it'll cut again so you can see him doing this. It's it's hard to explain, but when you see it and you pay attention, it is so shittily edited so terribly paced and so awfully directed that you cannot believe someone didn't just put this on dvd like it's not even dd well, okay it's dvd quality but it's nothing more this movie when it got to the action it was awful but then it insults your intelligence by making this man who we've come to know is a badass brian mills liam neeson's character who is still good in the film. I mean, his his chemistry with all the other people couldn't save this movie from being shitty. But we know he, him as a badass, especially from Taken 1. We don't need you to prove that he's a badass anymore. He just needs to go through the motions and, you know, if someone's trying to take his life, you know, end it. There you go. You don't need to prove he's a badass by having him almost so close to death and then, oh, the next scene, he's perfectly fine because he's so badass without a scratch on his body, even though he's 60 years old. <laughs> okay. There's three scenes in particular. I'm going to spoil them. I don't care. There's one scene where... He drives a car, and it's ridiculous, it's so stupid. He drives his car into a building and drops his car with him inside it into an elevator shaft all the way to the bottom. And he's in the car. There's no way for him to escape. There's no doors to open or whatever. There might be another, like, elevator door thing you'll pry open, maybe. But he is in the car. He's in the car, and he's, and he's actually, like, going, ugh. Like, he's actually in pain. Like, he's like, ugh. And he's trying to, like, get out, but he's, like, in pain because he just freaking threw himself down an elevator shaft in a freaking car. Like, at least four stories. But, okay. So, the next scene, you don't see him get out of the car and leave. The next scene, the car explodes. I don't know why. Actually, they I think they did show that spark hit the gasoline. So, okay. that, that they, they explained that, I think. But the car explodes, blows up like half the building, and the next scene, literally, they cut to Liam Neeson walking out on a cell phone talking to Forrest Whitaker's character saying, yeah, you, now you know how badass I am. No, we don't. You just jump cut it to him being okay. You didn't show him be a badass. You didn't even show him like after him saying he's a badass, like him escaping. You didn't even see him like use a... a thumbtack to get out like macgyver or something no he's he's fine it doesn't matter there's another scene where he his car flips over down a hill and then the car explodes for no reason that one doesn't make any sense there's no gas leak or whatever it just explodes when it hits the bottom of the hill and he you don't see him jump out of the car at all it's flipping so even if he jumps out of the car he's he's badly injured like if he jumps out of the car while it's flipping he, he's he's either done or he's gonna have something broken but it doesn't show him jumping out of the car, but the next scene is him, he's perfectly fine. He, he hid behind a rock. He jumped out of the car and hid behind a rock, so that's why you didn't see him when the car was flipping. So dumb. So dumb. Okay, at least that one explained that he actually jumped out of the car. The next one isn't really a, a oh, they're trying to show him as a badass. This one is just a really ridiculous one. An again, involving a car. Whenever it involves a car, I guess it's just ridiculous. And there's a lot of car-related things in this film for some reason. Um, maybe it's because Liam Neeson's old and he can't punch anymore. Uh, punch people anymore, so they have to put him in a car all the time. This one is so ridiculous, okay? Liam Neeson's in the car with a bunch of police officers. He takes over the car and... Uh, he's on a freeway and then he goes into the other side of the, you know, the opposite traffic and his car crashes and he's there. A bunch of police officers surround him and the other police officer that's inside the car with him and they tell him, don't move or we'll shoot. Okay. And then the opposite traffic starts hitting the car that Liam Neeson and the other police officer are in, even though they clearly see that this car just crashed and it's in the middle and they start hitting this car, it's not immediately after the car crashes, it's like at least 10 seconds later, and then the cars just start hitting Liam Neeson. And what happens? The police officer immediately starts shooting Liam Neeson and the other police officer because they got hit by a car. Not because they try to flee, like flee or anything, which, by the way, the police officer, the other police officer is most likely dead, I don't even remember, but 
why would the police officer start shooting him when he got hit by a car? Like, I'm sorry, I have to explain this. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. The plot twist in this film, the couple of plot twists, if, if you will, is ridiculous. The villains are some of the most generic Russian bad guys you've ever seen in your life. Think of the last action movie, or hell, think of the last movie with a Russian bad guy. Anything. Any movie. A friggin', what, The Tooth Fairy. Did that have a Russian bad guy? I don't know. If it did, better Russian bad guy than the ones in this. Because these Russian bad guys are so, so freaking generic, and you never see them until the beginning of the film and the end. That's it. And you're supposed to fear these guys. They even talk about this one guy that's played by Sam Spruill, who's supposed to be this badass. Like, oh man, he wiped out platru uh, platu uh, platoons and stuff. Yeah, he's supposed to be badass. Show him, shoot one guy, and then next scene he's fighting Liam Neeson in his tidy whities What a badass. Whoa, I'm so scared. The Russian bad guys are awful. But then the twist when you find out who the actual bad guy is is so ridiculous, especially if you watch the first Taken movie. I recommend watching Taken 1 before watching this because they actually have a lot of characters from the first film in this film. Actually, it's not really a lot. Just one main character that was in the first Taken film that is in this film. And by the way, they completely recasted the person that played this specific character in Taken 1 and Taken 3. And he looks nothing like the character or the actor that played the character in Taken 1. It's ridiculous. The writing is awful. There's no good dialogue here. No good one-liners like Taken 1. I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't really always be comparing this movie to another movie, but I have to. It's a part of a series that started off with a great action film. Taken 3 is part of the Taken series. I can compare it if I want, and I'm sorry. But even if I don't compare it, it's an awful film either way. The action is edited to shit. You don't know what's going on, ever. They can't even make Liam Neeson climbing up a fence look realistic. They can't hit make him punch someone look realistic. Just nothing in this movie looked good. Nothing. Nothing was entertaining here. Besides, like I said, Liam Neeson talking to Maggie Grace a couple times here and there. There's some real emotion here and there. The movie's way too long. It's like an hour and 15 minutes, which is like 20 minutes longer than Taken 1. And about 40 minutes longer than it should be. Uh, the plot is ridiculous. It doesn't even matter. It really doesn't. Just don't even pay attention. Because it really insults your intelligence. And the story itself is just ridiculous and dumb. and tries to have twists, which Taken should never have a twist. Yeah, this is M. Night Shyamalan's Taken. This is just Taken. Alright? And no one gets Taken in this film. No one. No one gets Taken. Which is fine. Because, you know, the last two movies they did it already. So, screw it. Fine. Do something different. But, oh man. What they did was highly, like, way more generic than the, than the last movie did. It was, This is a bad movie. I don't have anything else to say. The acting's okay. You know, Liam Neeson does a good job for the most part. He's still likable. The first, like, 20 minutes is tolerable, but when it gets into the actual story and the, the twists and the action and stuff, it's awful. And it was actually, you know, I will say this. It was actually nice to see Liam Neeson's, like, his his crew, I guess you could say. His, his buddies come in again from the first film. They were barely in Taken 2. They, they were likable in Taken 1. I'm glad to see them again in this film. But hopefully this will be the last film in the Taken series. If not... Please give it back to, uh, I forgot the guy's name that directed the first one, uh, but it was the guy that did District B-13. Give it back to that guy. He knows how to do action. Taken one, uh, even from Paris with Love, I like that movie. And even uh, District B-13, that's an awesome action film. Give it back to that guy. Do not give it to this guy. This guy does not know how to direct films, and I hate Livier Megaton. He's awful. Awful director. I hate this film. I really do. Dialogue, action, freaking story, everything in this film is absolute trash. I absolutely hate this film. It's one of the worst films I've seen in the last couple years. Easily the worst action movie I've seen in a very long time. Yes, even worse than Transformers. I'm giving this a 4 out of a 40. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. Are you serious? I'm done. This movie series is done, okay? I hope they do make another one. Just make it better, I hope. Give it back to the guy that did the first film. Don't get this guy to do it again. I'm done. This movie sucked. If you see it and you like it... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do for you, man. <sighs> this movie sucked. So anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you don't enjoy the film. Uh, more movie reviews to come. 2015, yay!